Good morning, market streamers, and welcome to What's Hot on the Open, May 10th, my dad's birthday. Happy birthday, dad. And I want to welcome you to a interesting open on the U.S. markets. My name is Joseph Cusick with the Cusick Group Securities offered by Moneybach. Let's jump in, take a look. Dow Jones down 55 points to 20,921. That's good for about a quarter percent to the downside. Now, of course, all the headlines, all the pundits speaking about uh, FBI Director Comey being fired. I don't know about you, but I pretty much so I'm not making investment decisions based on whether or not there's an FBI Director in place or not. Um, yes, it is a headline. Yes, there are other deeper political implications. But at this juncture, um, if a guy like Warren Buffett isn't making decisions based on whether or not Comey's in office, why should I, right? <laughs> Keep it in perspective. But the Dow is down, and I think the Dow is down not so much on the Comey investiga- uh, firing, but it's more along the lines of looking at the mixed data, for example, that came out of China. You had a hotter than expected CPI, that's the Consumer Price Index, that means their prices are going up for consumers, but their PPI came in a little bit cooler than expected, came in at 6.4%, they were expecting 6.7%. Now, that's not a huge differential, uh, but it is something that you're going to take note. China is a huge net exporter. Their economy has been growing, and everybody's been on the outlook for inflation, and they're starting to see it in that economy, but yet producers aren't uh, showing the same enthusiasm as how much the consumer is now paying. So that is an interesting dichotomy that we're seeing here, and we're also going to watch the European Union. Uh, the head of the ECB, Draghi, came out, said, okay, things look good. Uh, we're going to continue the course with our s- stimulus policies. But uh, as far as their concerns on price fluctuation, especially currency fluctuation, they're feeling very good about it, especially post the French elections. Uh, with that being said, though, they're not ready to pull the plug on uh, the stimulus. And we saw that um, sovereign debt. Those foreign bonds, Germany, France, uh, and so forth, England, uh, all up to the upside. You've seen those bonds being bought up off of their lows. Um, That could also uh, put into question what's going on in the U.S. So let's jump in. Dow Jones, we had mentioned down 54, a quarter percent. The S&P 500 down two and a half points. So just ever so slightly uh, down about one tenth of percent at 23.94 on the cash S and P 500, and then taking a look at the Nasdaq 100, the uh, down five points at uh, 57, 56.73. Watch this one closely. Large cap tech has been the driver. Um, the thing that has been keeping in, uh, institutional investors, advisors on the sidelines at this juncture is is that when you are having a market that's carried on the back of few. That is a very difficult value proposition, Um, in spite of the fact that we see that uh, one of the largest investors in the world, Warren Buffett, coming out saying that they're going to increase their stakes and have increased their stakes in the likes of Apple. You're seeing IBM struggling this morning, though, on the open. We'll see if that continues. Um, And again, we'll watch that very closely as we get into the tail end of earnings as well. Um, one of the more notable earnings announcements, too, was NVIDIA. This was a darling, darling last year, and I know I'm bouncing around a little bit, but I wanted to bring this to light. Stock's up 14 points. Great earnings. Um, it's up 13% this morning on the open at 117, and uh, really just went outside of its estimated move that the options market was anticipating, and it was a big move to the upside. You can clearly see it's up there all by its lowsome at these highs. Um, And NVIDIA has been a darling. These are levels that we have not seen since um, February of this year. Um, And before that, we didn't see it until uh, end of December, beginning of January uh, of 2017, 2016, 2017. So we're seeing the stock rebound. And what's notable is, hey, guess what? It bounced right off of that 20 and 50 day moving average after grinding for the last couple of weeks. The catalyst, great earnings. The Russell 2000, uh, down fractionally. Um, this small cap domestically centric um, index, it's right on its 20-day moving average. Folks, watch the Russell 2000. This is going to be a great barometer of whether or not we're going to get that next leg to the upside for the bulls. The large cap indices, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones are all in bullish trends, but 
That could come into question if we see any weakness in the Russell 2000. Now, with this firing of Comey, this could put into question tax reform, health care reform, because now you're going to see Capitol Hill get very tenuous um, with this recent development. That then could impact the markets. But we're going to watch this very closely. Volatility, though, on the news, down. Expectation of big violent moves dropped after this headline came out. So you see how the markets are reacting to this. Uh, yes, the headlines for the mainstream media is going, oh my gosh, but the markets aren't doing the same. The dollar index up ever so slightly at 99.60, up six cents. And we're seeing the crude markets firm up right here at this $46.56 level. Um, up 36 cents after what was a pretty significant draw on the API data at uh, 5.9 5 .9 million barrels. Let's watch the EIA report at 1030. I trust that report much more than the, EI, the API. There's too much swag in the API data. What's notable about what also came out in the API data that there was a large growth in gasoline stockpiles. In other words, what we're pulling in out of the pump into our uh, vehicles. There was a large uh, build there. Um, that means that uh, we should start seeing gasoline prices get a little bit more uh, volatile, potentially to the downside. You are seeing Brent, though, moving to the downside, down 61 cents at 48.73. Let's see if that continues. That uh, is primarily pumped out of the Middle East. We're getting close to that June expiration of the uh, production cuts. Let's see if OPEC and non-OPEC nations start to grumble about whether or not they're going to continue with those production cuts. You're seeing bonds here in the U.S. They're moving to the upside as well. You saw sovereign debt, uh, as I had noted in the on the open in Europe. You saw German bonds, uh, French bonds, as well as U.K. bonds, England, moving to the upside as far as price action. You're seeing similar action here in the United States. Uh, not saying that there is a risk-off type of mentality going on, but bonds have pulled back pretty dramatically. You see that the 10-year challenged and went through its 50-day moving average on a price side. Let's see how the yields hold up. Um, again, last night pulled back. It was straddling that 2.4%. Uh, it went through and now trading at 2.37% on the 10-year yield. Let's see if it tries to re-challenge that 50-day moving average at 2.35%. Then that 20-day moving average comes in at 232 Then you could see that 230 2.3% uh, yield being challenged. What does that mean? That means that bond yields going down, prices going up. That means that there could be more money being parked in bonds short term until we start getting some more transparency, not only with this FBI situation, but remember, we have some critical votes that are, have been challenged and now are going to be challenged in the Senate, specifically on health care. And we still have the debate on tax reform, which everybody is waiting for. All right, folks. That's it for on the open in the U.S. Uh, that's what's really hot. And we'll take a look at some strategies. I want to take a look at some approaches, some sim simple ones that you can utilize uh, to write premium. In other words, sell options, specifically call options against long core stock holdings or ETF holdings. And we're going to be able to do that very efficiently to increase potentially yield in your portfolio. All right, that's it right now for MarketStream. Join me at 1.30 Eastern time for that strategy now talk. Till then, have a great trading day, and we'll see you here at MarketStream.Live.